Hi, can you hear me? Carolina here. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. Great. I just mute again. Thank you. Sarah, you're in record mode? Check. Okay. So thank you everybody for joining us this evening for a session that we've titled How to Crack the Mystery Code and Charter a Corporate Program for the End of June. Uh, a few of you might be skeptical that this could be done, but actually I'm here to show you that I think it's truly possible to get this done. Um, what I've put together is a six-step overview of what we could... Oh, sorry, I'll backtrack for a second in case some of you don't know me. My name is Elizabeth Nosted, and I'm the current region advisor for Region 10. And Region 10 is all of the districts in Europe, including the UK and Ireland. And as part of being a region advisor, we like to coach and support all the districts for doing what they should do really well, and we'll give them a little coaching support. And so one of the things that I was asked to do is talk about chartering corporate. People might know them as corporate clubs. I'm going to try to get you to change uh, some of the wording that we use, and we call it a corporate program. So what I've put together, if my slide moves, which it is not at the moment, hmm, I'll be right back. Goes a little slow. So I put together six steps that I think uh, are necessary for starting a corporate program. And what I also wanted to tell you is that I will speak for four or five slides and then I will pause for a moment and ask if there's any questions or comments at that point in time. So if you can hold your questions for a few minutes or if you write them in the chat, then Sarah will speak. Um, let me know that there's questions in a few minutes. So I see it as to start this corporate program, you need to contact a company. And I'm going to talk about warm con connections and cold connections. And then we want to ask them if they would like to hold an open house meeting. Then you hold that exciting open house meeting. After that, you collect the application forms of the people who want to join, collect money right after that. And then ensure that you have a team of leaders who are willing to lead the club. And the last step is to send in the paperwork to Toastmasters. And as it gets really busy at the end of June, I suggest you want to do that a few days before the end of June. Let me walk you through uh, at least the first step to get started on it. Now, now it's really weird. I don't know why slides will not move. There it goes. Okay, so how do we contact a company? Well, I'm going to give a little bit of background there about what, what a corporate program is, why I've called it a corporate program, and why you might want to build one. Some comments about finding the company with warm connections and cold connections. Background. Well, what is a corporate club or program? And I do want to use the word program, especially, and I want you to get used to the word program. Because a club sounds like maybe a stamp club or the running club or something like that, rather than business opportunity for people to improve their skills. And it should be clear that you should also look at why are you trying to do this. So the corporate club or program, we want you to consider, is it, corporate program that would only allow employees of the company, and that's usually called a closed program, or whether a postmaster member or a non-member decides to start a club that is just meeting on a company premises, whether the company will be paying the member fees and other associated fees, uh, or is it somewhere where the Toastmaster educational program is just part of the corporate educational offering that the company has? as well to consider, well, would you consider a corporate program to include government or university 
flip-flops I put there again. It should have been program. So why do you want to start this? Uh, and I put down a few things here to consider. Well, do you, do you want to start it because you work for a company that is over 200 employees? You would like to have a postmaster's program at your site. It's a really good reason for wanting to start one. Or is it just something as simple as you want the company to pay your membership fees? And perhaps you want the learning experience of starting a club so that you can reach your leadership award. Those are some pretty good reasons for wanting to start a corporate program. So I will pause for just a minute here and ask if there's any questions or comments. Sarah, anything on the comments chat? Um, not yet, but someone could be writing. Okay, well then we'll keep it moving and we'll pick up their question after. So the question that might come into your mind is, well, how do we find the company uh, where we should start a Toastmaster Club? And I think there's any number of ways to do this. Uh, for instance, one of the ways could be to ask your current club members where they work. And I would call that a warm connection. You know the people in your own club and you want to find out where they work, see if they could start a club. Then on the second side might be just contact potential companies in your area, again with the criteria that they should be over 200 employees there. You don't know anybody at that company, then it's more a cold call to get them going. Let's look at the warm connections first, because this is what you could actually do if you have a warm connection. You could get this going by the end of June. So, uh, as I don't understand Russian or whichever language came in, then maybe I can get you to mute in between and write in the chat. It's a lot. So, survey your current club members about where they're working. And if they have a company that's over 200 employees, and usually it means 200 employees on, their, on one site, makes it easiest, then that is a good option for starting a club. You also should be able to check through your district leaders about companies that have postmaster clubs in other places in the world. And then check if that company is in your city or town. As an example, it could be IBM, AstraZeneca, CGI. Uh, just at the start of the call, we mentioned Halder Topsell. As well, your club growth director, that's what CGD stands for, and they might have identified some companies where there has been some interest in the past, and they're identified in the marketing plan for the district. As well, CGD often receives the requests that come through Toastmasters.org are showing up in the uh, marketing program called Insightly. So there's really good options for starting clubs. And then as well, the last one on the list here is Ask your friends and neighbors about what they, where they're working and whether they have a company, belong to a company that's over 200 employees. So I'll pause there for another second to see if somebody might have questions or comments on this point now. Okay, does anyone have any questions um, or comments? Can you please write them in the chat box? Thank you. There's nothing happening yet. I must mean that everything is totally clear. Okay. I'll keep going then. So we've also got something, except now I see something's coming up in the chat. Okay. CGD, Up Growth Director, Caroline. Carolina. That's what Sarah is currently. Oops. And I stopped sharing, so I'm going back here. not going to go out to chat again, Sarah. You have to tell me. So, cold connections are where you maybe don't know anybody at a company. But what you can do 
do a Google search for companies in your city with employees, more than 200 employees. This is kind of a guideline that Toastmasters has set up where companies with over 200 employees are good places to start Toastmaster Club. Uh, to do this, you might want to look at what are the essential ingredients of a successful cold call. Because what you'll be doing is marketing yourself and Toastmasters if you were to make a call to a company where you propose to start a group. We would also look at, well, who's you, who you should call. And how do you make the first call? And then what is the outcome that you're looking for? So these are a lot of things to consider in the cold connection section. For the sake of tonight's call, I'm not going to spend any more time on this because with a cold connection, it's going to be a lot harder to start a club and it would be harder to get it done by June 30th, which is the point that I wanted to make for this particular meeting, how you can get it done by June 30th. So when you're going to approach a company, you want to think what is the outcome you would like. And in getting the outcome, you would like to understand what is the pain point or the need a company has that they might then be interested to start a Toastmaster Club. And here are some ideas. They want more employee engagement. Maybe they've been identified by a number of people within the company who want to improve their public speaking skills. And maybe it's because they're out speaking to their customers or maybe it's because when they do presentations within the company, presentations aren't up to a good standard. The company might want to have some soft, skill, soft skills development for their employees. Soft skills are really everything that Postmasters does. Everything from the public speaking skills to the leadership skills to giving feedback to, yeah, Multiple things fall into soft skills. Maybe the company wants to develop more leadership talent internally. Uh, maybe they don't have a leadership talent program now, but what they can see from the Toastmaster program is how they could develop their leaders. leaders. The company might also want it for diversity because they want to bring together both from the aspect of wildly different people within the company also diversity from being the accountants together with the marketing people. That's also diversity. And maybe the company sees that this is a good program for corporate social responsibility. Because if they have employees that are showing that they can do good presentations, can also go out and represent the company in other areas. When you also um, reach the person at the company that you're going to talk to and you're going to talk through how to do an open house and give them some details about what it costs to have a club and how to pay for it. Then when you get to the final point, you're going to decide date for an open house. These are quick steps to get through to a club going. Sarah, I'll pause for another minute to see if anything else has come in. Um, if we start, um, Gap wanted to know where he could find existing companies. Um, and I wrote to him, um, it's on toastmasters.org, and he can find it by Googling corporate sponsors, toastmasters.org. Um, that's one of the ways. And I think uh, Toastmasters, at least at the beginning of this year, they sent to the district director uh, an Excel file over corporate sponsors. Marta wants to know prospective companies in Northern Jutland. I will have to send that to her when I open up the marketing plan later on today. And does anyone else have any other questions? So whoever asked about Northern Jutland, um, I think use your skills now and think through what companies you know in that area. Oh yeah, I, I was downloading a list of um, corporations um, I can send them also. I've got a pictures on my phone of some of them. Yep. So it's uh, Google it yourself and say companies with more than 200 employees in X area, whatever it might be. Anything else, Sarah? 
that's all for now. Thanks. Okay, so I'll keep going and because up to now I've been talking about this corporate program. And this has come through because Pat Johnson, one of the past international presidents of Toastmasters, put together a book that she talked about at the last international convention. That we are not using language when we go and approach companies and want to start Toastmaster program. We are using the words like club. And as I said a few minutes ago, that sounds more like the stamp club or the running club. So we've got to change our terminology. What I'd like to show you now is some of the um, paradigm shift to go from Toastmaster term on the left side to corporate language term that used. So instead of calling it a club, we would call it a Toastmaster corporate program. Instead of calling it a member, we could call it a participant. That'd even be some other good word. We're often talking about dues or membership dues. Instead of that, call it tuition. For instance, at university, you pay a tuition fee. So this makes it sound more like you're getting something out of it. Instead of calling club meetings, call it a program or a session or an event. Actually, more people are interested in attending events than they are in attending meetings. Instead of calling it club officers, then talk about leadership roles or leaders. And another term for club officers could be a program executive board. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to change yet. Uh, eventually, but you wouldn't talk about it right away necessarily. Uh, instead of club officer training, talk about leadership training or executive board training. Sounds much more into the corporate speak. Instead of calling them manuals or paths, call it a curriculum. That's what you would call it at a university or school, the curriculum or program that you're taking. We're really quick to use such terminology as CC or DTM or Pathways L1, which means absolutely nothing to somebody in the corporation. So you could call it at milestones. Levels are people achieving milestones. Instead of calling it the Distinguished Club Program, which Distinguished Club means nothing as well to anybody in a corporate, call it a Strategic Plan or a Balanced Scorecard or Key Performance Indicators. Those are terminology that corporations use, so we've got to learn to use the ones that appeal to them. And instead of talking about goals for the club, talk about critical success factors. So, Sarah, I've seen a number of chat things flashing by. Is there anything I should know about? Um, yes, Tommy Jensen wants to know if there's anywhere where he can get a slide with the corporate words because it's super brilliant. Thank you. I'm glad to send a, um, share my slides after this program. And that's all for now. Okay. Good. Hi, Elizabeth, may I, ask, may I ask you a question? This is Christopher Vanska speaking. Yeah, yes, go ahead. Um, uh, uh, I really like this uh, translation from our Toastmasters terms to the corporate language and to get them more on board, but is this only intended to be for, the, for approaching maybe the HR departments of the companies? Or do we have we keep up with all the wordings later on? Because when I, for example, as an area director, approach all my clubs, I can't really distinguish between, well, participant or member or club leader or what is it here, program leader, etc. Because after we've charted all the clubs, we will drop back to all the traditional wording, wouldn't we? Not necessarily. Um, it's it's sort of up to the area directors who might have a corporation as part of their, um, you know, as a club, as a program in their area to start to use some of these other terms. Because I think you will find that the corporations are far more interested to send people to leadership training than they are something called club officer training. Um, I think we just have to start to become more accustomed to these terms if we really want to get serious about opening corporate clubs, corporate programs. All right. 
Yeah, so we are. So but the question is when I, for, let's say we, we advertise a club officer training, then we will send out flyers where it says club officer training on July the whatever it is. And are, are you suggesting that we have several or two different flyers, one saying, well, well, we invite all the club leaders to a club officer training and we invite corporate uh, program leaders to a uh, leadership training or what's there the suggestion? So, or is it more like we, we want to get rid of all the old terms and just translate everything to the new ones? Well, we want to use terms that the companies are going to understand and uh, an officer Hmm, they think, oh, are we in the military or something? Uh, it's just not terms that they would use. So if, if we are going to get there, we have to adjust our language. And, and actually, I think even a regular club might be more interested to come to current club officer training if it was called leadership training. So think about it for a little. I don't say there's a right or a wrong answer, but if we're inviting... Um, people in corporates, then let's use some other language. Mm -hmm. Dora, was there anything else popped up there? Um, Frederica just writes that she agrees totally um, with using the, the corporate language. Fantastic. So I'm going to just quickly flash by two slides. So you won't have a chance to read them you'll have a chance to get them afterwards. And the reason I wanted to include them is I wanted you to start thinking and think if you realize what are the unique qualities of the Toastmaster educational program, because these are the things when you go into the company, these are the things that you will be telling whoever you are meeting what is so good about Toastmasters. So there's the first flash of it. I'm going to go to the second page, which is, what are the benefits for the company? And we often don't stop to think about this. We stop to think about what we might get out as a member. These are things that a company pays for when one of their employees takes a course. Critical listening skills, feedback and evaluation skills, interpersonal skills, all of these things they're used to paying for. And these are all the things and more that are in the Toastmaster program. So you'll get more of those when, um, when you get the slides afterwards. Or we can come back to them. I would like to focus on how are you going to get this club going by June 30th. Which means you also need some language and you also need to know how much does it cost to get a club going. So if we call it tuition as one example, uh, the initial startup fee is $125. This is paid one time, and it's for the, your startup materials. In other words, it's called the application to organize in postmaster terms. Yearly tuition for an individual is $90 per year, paid twice, twice a year. And then a program might have additional costs such as having to pay for rooms, having to pay for bank fees, banner pins, recognition fees, or celebration fees. And if there's questions about those, I can come back to them after as well. These were all things that I included in step number one, and that is uh, getting to the company and getting them to agree to hold this open house meeting. So I'm gonna cover the open house meeting things, preparation, actual meeting, and some follow-up. In the preparation for demo or open house meeting, uh, and I think actually at a company, open house is actually more, or information is better than demo. So when you've met with the person in the corporation, you're going to agree upon a date. And you also want to have the corporate champion, that's the person you've gone to meet who will agree to this, who can agree to this, arrange a date so that they can also attend. Book a meeting room and be able to upsize or downsize the meeting room. If you get a lot of people, you want to be able to upsize and have bigger space available. Not too big because you want to make it cozy enough that it's a lot of fun and people want to be there. You want to have a way to invite 
people within the company. So what will this corporate champion do for you? Will they send out the invitation to the demo, oops, demo event or info event? Uh, will they put the uh, event in people's calendars by sending out invitation to a date? And also the, the person within the company who's receiving the invitation should be able to accept it so that you know how many people are attending. You want to find out who's going to show up, for instance, for knowing the size of room you need or the number of brochures you need to bring. Uh, the next point I have there is get as many people as possible involved during your meeting. This means inviting all your friends who uh, are Toastmasters who can help you run the meeting because you want to show them a variety of skills, a variety of the type of speakers, so they, they don't just see you. However, you can do it as an individual, and I've seen it done. What you want to do is have a simple program, but make it memorable. And this includes having something I've called testimonials, where some Toastmasters who've experienced the Toastmaster program will stand up only speak to two minutes about what they gained out of being a Toastmaster. That's a really powerful message. You also want to ensure that you are prepared for this meeting. Before the meeting starts, as people are coming in, you're going to hand out a card or a piece of paper with an engaging question upon it. And then you'll ask the people to hand you back those cards so that you can use that and use it for the table topics part. One of the questions that has worked really well is, what is it that you are most proud of or which accomplishment um, are you most proud of? Something like that. People find it easy to speak about that in table topics. Also suggest that you have some brochures and these brochures can be downloaded and printed. There's brochures and flyers. You want to be sure that you have contact details. If it's going to be you that's doing it, put your own contact details on because people might have questions. If it's somebody within the company, make sure their contact details are on it. And give this brochure or flyer to everyone that shows up at the meeting. As well, you want to take along printed application forms so that people can fill it in on the spot. I give an example of why I say printed. We had a person that came to an open house kind of meeting. Five years later, they showed up and said, I saved the brochure I got. At the time that you had the open house, I was too busy. Now I want to join the club. Five years later. As well, you want to prepare an agenda. And actually, we give a suggestion about leaving out times on the agenda. Because if you go a bit over, a bit under, then people might... Um, know feel weird about it but have signs on the agenda for the people who are organizing it and you can either give the agenda as a handout or show it on the screen um, then I've got okay any questions comments related to the preparation part only there's none in the chat right now Okay, I must be so totally clear, great, no. <laughs> so then we get actually right into what is the demo or the information event? What do we have to ensure there? We have to have a really great Toastmaster who will explain what is happening during the meeting. And also what they need to add in is, well, what could you learn from each of the role that you take in the meeting? I suggest you have two Two speeches, maximum two, depending on the time you have, sorry. But two speeches have one that's a beginner and one that's more advanced. The reason you have the beginner speaker is if you have somebody who's too advanced, people would say, oh, well, I'm too nervous and I could never be like that. If you have somebody who's a bit hesitant or whatever, then people can identify with that person and say, okay, I could do that too. In the table topic session, you could use the question that you have on the card. What am I mo most proud of? Or what's an achievement? Really good evaluators for those two speeches. And 
if you're going to have the roles like awe counter or timer, then explain what they are and the reasons why we have those during the meeting. Towards the end of the meeting, you'll also want to have some announcements. You want to have the next date, next meeting date organized so that you can tell people we're going to be meeting at that time. You also want to ask for people who might be interested in the leadership roles because you want to get leaders on board right away. You want to ask for people to participate in the next meeting. You, they like to give a speech or run table topics or one of those. And after the meeting, you can, or at the meeting, you could hand out or send out the icebreaker speech project and ensure that you're giving the application for membership form. You need that in their hands to fill it out and ask them to fill it out if they're interested. Dara, did I see any comments? Um, yes, um, Goods recommends that you start with the beginner speech. Start with what, sorry? The beginner speech. Absolutely. Start with a person who is less accomplished so that people see that right away and identify with it. Yeah. And we've got somebody who hasn't muted. Uh, Sarah, is it possible for you to mute them unless they're going to speak? Especially the piano playing. Thank you. Anything else come up, Sarah? Um, that's it for right now. Okay. And I'll go on with the follow-up after the event. And what's actually really important is to send out a thank you to all of the people who attended, or even those who didn't show up and they had maybe registered to attend. It shows that you're taking a real interest in everybody. This could also be the person at the company who helped you organize the meeting. So thank you out to them. And invite the people back to the next meeting dates that you have planned. You can send them the icebreaker speech electronically. And also, uh, we produced a one-pager note for the leader roles. Uh, and we probably need some adjustment on the leader role names uh, instead of the things like sergeant at arms and so on. So that comes on one pager about what the role is about. Also want to be sure to report back to the corporate champion if they didn't attend the meeting about how the meeting went. On the other hand, if they attended the meeting and spend a few minutes with them reflecting about what they noticed or what they thought about the meeting. And as well in the thank you you send out, then follow up with the people about the application form. They want to become a, a uh, what do we call it? We didn't call it member, we called it, ah, forgotten already. Is that a participant or something? Uh, it was a participant, yes. So, follow up with the participants to see if they want to become, follow up with them to see if they'd like to join the group. So, then the third step that I put together is, well, collect the application forms. They could be handwritten or as you've sent it out electronically with the thank you, you could get back electronically and that makes it a whole lot easier for Toastmasters International because if they have interestingly spelled names uh, then or special characters like in Danish or Swedish that is not typical in the US and that's a whole lot easier to take it from the electronic form. As well an advice I give and especially because you want to charter quickly is for every member, put them on an Excel sheet where all of the members are listed with all of the important information that Postmasters needs like name, address, email, uh, telephone number, whether they've been a member before or whether they're a new member, a few things like that. Put that all in an Excel sheet because then 
when Toastmasters receives it, then they can simply do copy paste into their system. So far, we don't have the system where we can directly key the potential members into their system. But I have heard that that's coming at some point. You or the person in the company that's helping start this program, you want to keep in touch with all of them. You want to ensure that they know when the next meeting is, even the meeting date following that. Step number four is collect the money of the people who want to join. And here's where you may have had to decide with the corporate person that you're in touch with about whether the company will pay the fee or whether the individuals need to pay the fee. So this is in the preparation before the demo or info meeting, info meeting whether it will be charged um, determine what membership fee will be charged and that fee term is determined by whether you have to pay for a meeting room, whether you have to pay for a bank account or additional items more than the $125 um, fee to start the club and the $90 per year fee uh, for an individual member. And you want to ask the question of the corporate sponsor, will, will any of those be paid for by the company? So um, what I say here now is if you want to realistically get this club going by the end of June, uh, I suggest that it should not be done by the company where it's paid, um, where the company will pay for it, because quite often it takes them longer to get Postmasters International set up in their accounting system and it would be for somebody in the club, maybe the person who's assigned as the treasurer of the club. Uh, so it takes longer for the company to pay than for the individuals to pay to get their membership be reimbursed later. And Whoever the treasurer is in the club can open a bank account or a PayPal or some other option where the membership fees could be paid in. So they're all ready to be paid to Toastmasters when the 20 members are arranged. During the meetings, then you'll want to indicate what is the Toastmaster fee per member, including any of these extra expenses that then might be charged and indicate who will pay the Toastmaster fee, whether it's the person themselves or the company that's going to pay it. Then you need to tell them how they need to pay the fees, whether it's to a bank account or um, whatever method you're going to use to pay it. And I'll just do the last comment on the page before I saw the comments pop up. I want to ensure that the payments are coming in. And if they're not coming in, but you have a membership form, then remind people they should pay into that whatever account or way you're going to do it. So, Sarah, do you have something else popping up? Yep, there's a lot of things coming in. Um, Marta wants to know if you make a cold contact call, should you go through HR? Actually, so I have a bias against HR, but um, in some organizations, they're the softest way to get in because quite a, most of the time you are solving a problem that HR has. They have a pain point about, as I wrote earlier, uh, employee engagement or soft skills training or other things like that. And by talking to HR, you're going to be solving something for them. However, HR usually does not have the money to pay for any program. So if you are able to get into a marketing department or a sales <laughs> department, then you're more likely to get something going quicker. Sarah, anything else? Um, Goods made a comment that might be helpful to clarify in advance. The company will pay the membership dues. Carolina wants to ask what a corporate champion is. So the corporate champion is a person within the company who will 
champion or support or help build up the club. Um, I give example of a recently chartered club where it was at a company and this was one of the managers of the company who said, I think this is a fabulous idea that you're getting it going. I support it fully and I agree that, um, you know, we will pay the membership fees of all the people who decide to join. So it's a person who believes in the program and will champion it. Okay. And Marta wants to know is if in District 95, if we have experience from using um, HR forums to pitch Toastmasters. Actually, I think somewhere there has been a um, HR meeting, a forum. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure if you're thinking of it as an online forum, but there they had a big um, HR meeting where all HR people have attended and uh, the person involved uh, managed to get themselves onto the program of the HR people and talk especially about soft skills that uh, you learn as part of Toastmasters. So it's an option for sure. Okay, and Goods wants to know what is your recommendation to incorporate the corporate programs into the district, like for attending the leadership training, maybe the contests and other things? Um, let me come back to that one in a minute. Um, I'd just like to cover the last two steps and then we can, and one of the last two steps includes an option for that. No, I didn't include it, but I'll come back to that. Okay. And Good says for the corporate programs, maybe you can get them to do their payment on a yearly basis instead of uh, twice. I'll also come back with a comment about that. Okay. <laughs> Super. Those are the comments for now. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome. So those were up to step four now, and, and that was a reminder of the fees. Step five is you need a team of leaders. It's really hard to do this by yourself, and you want to identify the leaders right away. When I started one of the last corporate uh, programs we did, I asked right away from the start, the very first meeting, who is interested in being a leader and helping get this group going. And I had immediately had four people raise their hands. Last couple took a little bit longer to uh, you know, talk to people and figure out who was interested in it. And then when we had that people of pool of interested people, then we started to tell them, as this preparation line at the top says, is what does each club leader do? You know, what does president do? What does VPE do? and using some other corporate terms. And they sort of self-select. They say, oh, well, that sounds interesting. I'd like to do that. So I've seen it work out really well, where people say, let you know themselves what they'd like to try. As well, ask other, other clubs leaders to support them. And especially at the meeting, tell the stories of what they learned from those other uh, roles that they took within the club. During the meeting, here's it again, ask them if they'd like to be a leader and tell them some of the benefits of the leaders and how it improves their life and their leadership skills. And after the meeting, then you'll need a list of the leaders and that has a special Toastmaster form for who has decided to be the leader of the club. Um, as well, uh, when you start your additional meetings, then uh, review the people review with all the people in the club, what needs to happen to get the club going. Here's the steps that we have to do to ensure the club will get going. And one more, step number six. Now you've got 20 applications in hand, or at least 20, because Toastmaster asks for the minimum of 20 members. This can be three dual members, it can be members who are transferring from another club, but hopefully you'll get 20 members you need with 20 applications filled out. So now you're ready for the paperwork. And here I put a reference in at toastmasters.org is the manual, How to Start a Club. Downloadable for free. Everybody should have that in their hand, read it through, and then ask questions if, if there's something you don't understand. First form is the application to organize. And this says, 
these people at this place, at this city, at this company want to start a club. And there's a couple, usually a couple of organizing people assigned there or you, you and somebody else. And the $125 charter fee uh, has to be paid at that time. Or it's advised that it's paid at the same time. Uh, the, once you've paid the application to organize and the $125, then you get access to some of the material. Interesting part about doing this at a company is sometimes this happens at the very first meeting. You can get uh, the 20 membership forms in. You have the company who will say that they'll pay the membership fees. So you just have to start filling out the form. And that's really good news. Charter payments form is a list indicating how many people are new members, and so they have to pay the $20 new member fee, same as in any club, and they would need to pay in the $45 for a six-month membership fee. Um, and as well, what you need to figure out here is if you are starting in a month that is not in the two times a year when Toastmasters collects fees, then you will want to collect these for the additional months in between. For instance, if I start a club now in June, then uh, and the next time we would be in is the end of September, uh, you need to account for those additional months in the month money you collect. There is a charter membership application. That's like almost like a regular application form, except it's called a Charter membership application form. And you need one of those filled out per person and signed on the back. You have a form called club information. And this is the information about when the club plans to meet, where they plan to meet, um, where the officers, and things like that. It's also the club constitution. And this follows the standard uh, constitution of Toastmasters. So uh, it's not that hard to fill out. If you need some help and you get to this point, please ask me or Sarah for information about how to do that. And there's also, uh, they changed the name a few years ago. It used to be called bylaws, but now it's called addendum. And these are the specific options for how you run the club, whether you will have a special fee for, um, ooh, I don't know. Um, oh, I can't think of the name here now. Say it's a, a, a member that you want to honor in some way, so you're going to pay the fee for them. Uh, that could be listed. Or uh, when, when the uh, payment of membership fees should happen. Those all happen in the standard club options. So, Sarah, I'll be quiet for another minute, and you can tell me if there's some other comments. Um, Christoph wants to new, know what we do if we can't find four leaders and 20 interested uh, participants right away. So I'm only talking about this as if you were going to charter by June 30th, but then you just keep on doing the same thing. You continue to hold meetings and or events and make them exciting and send out the information to all the people in the company that the corporate champion has said you can send it out to. Keep acting as if you were a regular Toastmaster club. Um, yeah, and in the um, club sponsor training materials in the appendix, there's actually a list of, you know, planning for like the six meetings, the six first meetings, so you don't need to invent everything there. Um, Kellen mentions honorary member and he wants to know about fees for transfer members. Right, so the honorary member is uh, probably not something you're gonna do right away. An honorary member is maybe somebody who helped start a club to begin with and uh, has been a longtime supporter of the club, so you decide to honor them in some way and pay for their membership fees. I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? Um, he wants to know if there's a fee for transfer members. Yes, so uh, for transfer members, it depends on when they have paid their fee to their current club. 
So let's assume that they're still in a club and we're going to charter now in June. So that means that this member has paid their fee, most likely, until um, the end of September because we have the two membership payment times, um, the start of April and the start of October. So that means they would have paid in um, three months in advance. So what you need to do is prorate the rest of the fee for the rest of the year. That this person would need to pay in for the rest of the time until uh, either uh, if you take in fees on a yearly basis or if you only take them in every six months and want that hassle, then till the next time that membership fee would have to be paid for the club. Um, so I'll go back to the question that Gibbs asked, um, which was the yearly basis. How did that question go? Um, she's asking, oh yeah, should the corporation pay on a yearly basis? And yes, they could, um, which could be good for some stability within the company. Uh, this doesn't mean that this is the only time you're going to pay fees because what we're hoping is that additional members will come into the club during the year. And then you will have the new member fee and the at least six months membership fees of the additional members coming in. What you may find within, if you pay for a yearly fee, is that uh, maybe a person moves or... You know, drops out or changes company. So they've paid in their fee for that year uh, or the company has paid in for them. So uh, if they leave, then it's a bit of a pity to be paying in that extra money for them. So plus minus. Nothing more come up? Um, um, yes, Yulia would like to know about club sponsors. Yes, so... There are two things called club sponsors and club mentors, and that is usually indicated on the application to organize, and it's usually in consultation with uh, uh, district officers, especially like the club growth director, because maybe you don't know anybody who could be the club sponsor or mentor. Club sponsor, and you are allowed to indicate two of them on the application to organize. Sponsor is somebody who will support the club, uh, especially up until the time that the club charters. And by charter, that means filling in all the rest of these forms and paying the fee. Uh, and they can support the club after it charters. Whereas the club mentor is somebody who will support the club for the first six months after the club is chartered means these are people who should be supporting the club for the time it takes for it to get stable and on its feet. And let's remember that everybody has to um, do a club sponsor or a club mentor by, time, by the time they do their DTM. So it's a good way to sell it into mature members. That's right. So it's a good way to get people who've been around a while and haven't done that on board to say, well, would you like to support this new club getting going? Uh, Julie, thank you for coming in. And we're sort of running out of time. Somebody had asked in advance of this program, um, how do you support the club in the long range and how do you make it sustainable? And that's specifically why I asked Julie to come in because she's been involved in a club here in Sweden for a long time. Do you have a few quick comments for us, Julie? I think keeping it going and keeping it sustainable is rem remembering that people come, people go, it's constant renewal of members. So it's it's one thing to go in and sort of say, oh, we're going to do a big drive, but you've always got to do a continual drive. So you need to be aware of that as, as leadership um, of a club is that, you know, it's not a one-time talk to HR it's a constant yearly thing yeah so the same kind of um, things that you would do to bring new members in 
do a community club. You can do similar sorts of drives for uh, you know, finding new members in, in your corporate club. An example of it could be maybe your corporation has a lunch room where people typically go to eat their lunch. Then you could stand at the door and hand out brochures or ask them if they'd like to come to your special open house meeting that you're having. That's just one example of many more. Sarah, was there some other comment written in? Yeah, um, Jan, he wants to know if he's going to be the incoming area director, if he can sponsor a club at the same time he's the area director. Absolutely, there's no restrictions that way. And Niha wants to know about club coaches. Oh, club coaches are when you have a club that is uh, a low Number of members it's under is it eight now um, and that is different than starting a new club and Sarah could probably hold another webinar related to how to be a club coach if you have a club that is uh, under under charter strength so uh, under the eight or 13 members or something it's, a club it's 12 or less 12 or less that's right thank you um, any other questions or comments before we wrap up for now? Hearing none, and I would like to thank you for attending this meeting. And if you will write in the chat if you want slides sent out to you. And we will uh, collect your emails from there and send it out to anyone who thinks that this set of slides would be worthwhile. I also have the longer set of slides where I've included some additional ideas. But I knew to fit it into this amount of time, I had to limit the slides to this. As well, you also noticed that I spoke fairly quickly. If you will write in the chat box, then 